In baptism, Joseph received the sign of the cross. May he now share in Christ's victory over sin. In our, in our first reading today, we, in our first reading today, we will, we will hear about God's gift of time, time which is so precious and which so often we don't, we take for granted. We hear that there's a time for mourning and a time for dancing, a time for joy and a time for sorrow. We often hear this reading at funerals. But there is one line that is particularly appropriate at our time, at this time. It speaks of a time for embracing and a time to refrain from embracing. Normally, our funerals, Irish funerals, Ballinamore funerals, are a time for embracing. A time where we embrace each other by lighting candles, sending mass cards, 
clasping hands firmly, hugging, telling stories, a little smile, a little tear. This is a time for doing that, and yet it is a time when we cannot do that. It is a time for embracing, and a time to refrain from embracing. As Dad was dying, and after Dad's death, we have felt the lack of that embrace. But we also have felt so embraced by so many people from Ballon Moore and from our wider family and friends, from our work colleagues and students, and from old customers, not old, former customers of the shop. People have left messages on RIP, they've sent us cards, they've joined us in prayer, they've written letters, they've told stories without meeting us in person. We thank you for that embrace. And we ask you to continue to embrace us as you join us online. Join us as we embrace Dad for one last time and carry him with our prayers to God and to heaven where we hope we will meet again and where we pray and hope he will meet not just Jesus and Mary and Patrick and Bridget and Joseph after whom he's named, but meet our mother Bernie and his father Batty and his mother Ellen and his sister Carmel. Carry him with your prayers and with our prayers and we ask you to join us in prayer not just following silently but to pray at home out loud out loud and if you can only if you can it's, it's convenient you might light a little candle for Joseph crying as you pray with us this funeral mass let us pray O God, who commanded us to honour father and mother, have mercy in your compassion. And my father Joseph and my mother Bernadette, forgive them their sins and bring us to see them one day in the gladness of eternal glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And I invite you to listen to our readings. The first reading tells us of the gift of time. The second reading invites us to reflect on a life poured out, ended, and the hope of eternal glory. A reading from the book of Ecclesiasticals. There is a season for everything, a time for every occupation under heaven, a time for giving birth, a time for dying, a time for planting, a time for uprooting, a time for building, a time for tearing down, a time for sorrow, a time for joy, a time for mourning, a time for dancing, a time for embracing, and a time to refrain from embracing, a time for finding, a time for losing, a time for saving, a time for throwing away, a time for mending, a time for te tearing, a time for keeping silent, a time for speaking, a time for conflict, a time for peace. What does a man gain from the efforts that he makes? I contemplate the task that God gives mankind to labour at. All that he does is apt for its time. But though he has permitted man to consider time in its wholeness, man cannot comprehend the work of God from beginning to end. This is the word of the Lord. And 
second reading. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. As for me, I am already being poured out as a libation, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. From now on there is reserved for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand to greet the Gospel. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. You are the King of glory. Whoever eats this bread and drinks my blood, I will raise him up on the last day, says the Lord. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. You are the King of glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus explained, I bless you, Father, Lord of heaven and of earth, for hiding these things from the learned and the clever and revealing them to mere children. Yes, Father, for that is what I pleased you to do. Everything has been entrusted to me by my Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all who labour and are overburdened, and I will give you rest. Shoulder my yoke and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Yes, my yoke is easy and my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dad was a Ballinamore man. He loved this town and hated to be away from it. And as Tommy Moran said in RIP, he contributed so much to its sporting, economic and cultural life. One of the things that he was very proud of was the Ballinamore logo, logo, the St. Bridget's Cross designed with anvils. He had helped with others come up with the concepts. I have a vague notion, I don't know how accurate it is, of him being huddled in the office or down the back of the shop trying to come up with it. I don't know whether it's childhood memories playing tricks on me, but I think it's there. We were very happy that we were able to bury him with his Ballinamore tie and the cross of St. Anne, uh, Bridget in anvils on, him, on it. One of the things that Dad was so involved in was the festival and it gave him so much pleasure a few years ago when the festival committee, the present committee, asked him to come and open the festival. On that occasion one of his favourite photographs would take and that of nearly all his grandchildren gathered below the platform. He was so chuffed to be asked back and to have the work he had done so long ago, over half a century recognised. And on that day, he talked about the anvil and St. Bridget's Cross, and he suggested a motto to go with it. He had borrowed, let's say, this motto from his old school, where he had gone with Uncle Columba. The motto was Fides Erebor, faith and strength. The strength symbolised by the anvils, the fate by Bridget's Cross. He suggested this as a motto to go with that cross. 
faith and strength. And I think this could have been a motto for our dad as well. Dad could be quite a strong man in his opinions and in his views, good or bad, and he did not hold back. And I know from stories Uncle Columba has told, he didn't particularly hold back all that much on the football field either. There's a wonderful little book. It's called Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl. And in it, it says that a human being can put up with almost any how if that human being has a wonderful why. Dad's why was mom and us and this town. And so he put up with a great deal because of that why. In many ways, while Dad did die last Tuesday, he has been dying by installments. He was forged to go back to the anvil in a very hard way. His life was bookmarked between two great pandemics, the TB pandemic back when he was 18 or 19 and was forced to go into St. Pat's in Carrick, where he was quite lonely and where he was sustained by the generosity of Brian Sweeney, who went over on his bicycle carrying sweets and chatting to him through the window. And, of course, this coronavirus, which deprived Dad of us and us of him, because visiting, despite the great efforts of everyone in Ballinamore Primary Care Centre, had to be curtailed for safety reasons. This was, in its own way, an anvil. And, of course, his mother's early death, when he was only two or so, despite Granda, who was father and mother to all his children, that was hard. And Mom's illness, as she slowly left us, I still remember one Sunday morning, saying Mass in the front room. There was only the three of us. We had taken it in turns, you see, to, to come home. Mom had always valued her return, and she would always have the heat on in my room and everything ready. But on this particular occasion, I was preparing to say Mass. I had everything ready, and Mom asked me again, What's your name again? The dementia had progressed. Dad, near, Dad did break down then. I nearly broke down too. That was one terrible anvil that Dad was hammered on. But he kept going. He kept going because Mom was his why. And it tells a big story that Mom's why was, Dad's why was Mom, that it was only a month after, it was actually an Ash Wednesday. It was only a month after Mom's month's mind that he sort of gave up and had to be brought into hospital. And from then on, he was in Laura Lodge in Carrick and back here in Ballinamore. But he had that inner strength, that ruber to keep on going, a determination, a determination not to let the Parkinson's get the upper hand, not to be away from home, he was, as Paul said in his letter, and Paul was quite an old man. He was in prison. He was facing execution by the Roman authorities. Paul talked about fighting the good fight and being poured out like a libation. And Dad certainly fought the good fight, and he was poured out. When you pour water or wine or any liquid on the ground, it will get thin and slowly sink into the earth and disappear. And that, in a way, is a matter for what happened to Dad. Despite his inner strength, despite the heart that would not give up, he became thin literally and metaphorically and gradually, gradually melted away. Dad was sustained by friendship, by the neighbours in Ballinamore, by people in the shops. He was so anxious when he got home that I think the first thing he did was to dial Jerry Mahan. He knew the, mem the number by heart. One of the things when we would visit Dad that sometimes frustrated us, and we will understand it, but maybe you might too, was ITV3. Uh, we would watch 
multiple episodes and often the same episodes of murder she wrote, of midsummer murders, of Inspector Morris, and particularly of a touch of Frost. And I often thought that Inspector Frost in some way mirrored that. He could be grumpy, he was certainly strong in his opinions, but there was an inner and innate goodness and kindness and a determination always to do what was right. And I thought that was one of the reasons Dad loved that series so much. Dad was dying by instalments. And I suppose when faced with something like Parkinson's, we can do two things. We could give up, we could become cynical, we could become bitter and despair, and that temptation is always there. But the other, the other option is this, to take twilight as a down payment and dawn to let go with confidence, being caught again by the Father in heaven. I remember one of my va- is, is dad playing with us and having us on the knee and letting us drop and catching us again. In a way, I think his fatherhood is a metaphor for God's fatherhood, that he catches us and to get back to feed us, to faith. The other half of the motto from Dad's old school that he suggested might go with St. Bridget's cross made of anvils. Dad's faith was fiercely important to him. I remember him coming to visit me in Kiltegan just after my first Christmas away and his kindness and his love. I remember him coming to Rome for my diaconate ordination. I remember him speaking at my at the meal after my ordination in the Great Southern Hotel in Sligo. And I remember always the way he received the sacrament when I celebrated, and I was so lucky to be able to do that in the home at home. I think the key that it brought was hope. And I think that's why St. Bridget's Cross is so important. St. Bridget, we have the ancient head here at the back of the church, And in the graveyard, the well of St. Bridget, St. Bridget, to whom there has always been such a devotion in this town, in this parish. And that cross, which Dad saw woven with iron anvils, normally it's woven with reeds. And reeds are weak and fragile and brittle. But when you weave them together in a St. Bridget's cross, and when I say you, not me, because any time I tried it, it always unraveled. But if it's done properly they can be powerfully strong. And the cross of St. Bridget, whether it's made in anvils or reeds, points to God, points from God to us with gifts, gifts of people who love us, gifts of faith, and above all, gifts of hope for a future and a further reunion. And with gratitude, gratitude for all the friends and neighbours and customers and students and patience and all that God has showered upon us. We have so much to be grateful for and Dad so much to be grateful to for finding my mother, for the love of his father and brother and sister, for the love and support of neighbours who were great fun, whether it was on the football field or on the stage or whether it was in the body of the hall as we celebrated the drama festival. All of these are things to be grateful for. And the other arm of the cross reaches out because gratitude is not enough if you just hone it to yourself. There was a lovely poster in the wall of Summer Hill when I was a student. The love in your heart wasn't put there to stay. Love is not love until you give it away. And Dad certainly gave away love, primarily to Mom and to us, but also to his community, contributing to its life, whether it was Sean O'Heslin's when he was younger, or the golf club, serving on the committee for such a long time, and being the captain along, and president along with mom, I can't forget that, uh, uh, or whether it was in the drama festival, or in the festival, and all the wonderful things that were done. One of the things that an awful lot of people have mentioned, and I, for well, the more people will understand this more than anybody else, but others may not, was about the visits of Santi to Ballinamore. 
uh, and I always thought it was a little bit unfair of Dad that somehow when Santy would come to the shop, he would always pick that day to be away in the cash and carry and leave poor Granda, who would get anxious, manning the door, myself handing out tickets, and Mom trying to direct everything while the rest of the rest of my family and my cousins would throw balloons out from the top windows. It really wasn't health and safety time. Uh, I was always a bit perplexed that, all right, he would get ready for Santi coming and he would have us wrapping parcels, girls' parcels and boys' parcels, but it was a thing that so many people have spoken of. One, one person spoke of how she had managed, uh, well, no, her brother, her big brother, now her big brother was only about six, I think, managed to get a balloon uh, as we threw them out and gave it to her and somebody pushed her from behind and she lost the balloon. But that, it, Santi, Santi noticed it on the way in and he gave her a balloon. Uh, uh, and I think that, that visit of Santi and the joy and excitement it brought to the town and having noses pressed against the pane windows and they, it, 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 it speaks to us of something beyond our normal earthly existence. Uh, it speaks to us of hope for the future. It speaks to us of Christmas and of a child in a manger who brings utter hope and joy. The Gospel, Jesus gives an invitation, an invitation which resonates with me and with Dad. Jesus explained, explained, exclaimed, I bless your Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for hiding these things from the learned and the clever and revealing them to mere children. The children of Ballinamore, something wonderful was revealed to them with the arrival of Santi a few weeks before Christmas in our shop. It brought such joy, just like the Christ child would bring as well. But Jesus went on to say, Come to me, all who labour and are overburdened, and I will give you rest. His last years, Dad was overburdened. He was labouring, even in his breeding, struggling. Every breath required that inner strength. He was shouldering a heavy yoke. But there's an invitation and a promise in the words of our Saviour. Shoulder my yoke and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble of heart and you will find rest for your souls. Dad has now found rest, and I am proud, and I am prayerful that I return our earthly father to our heavenly father, that he will be embraced by that father in love with Jesus and with the Spirit, with Mary, our mother, and with Bernie, our mother, as well. Mammy was great at getting lifts and this is in a day and a time before mobile phones and I always marvelled how no matter where you were going or who was going she could somehow discover a lift. My cousin Ruth McManaman when she was studying uh, speech therapy in, um, in Queens mom would often organise lifts with her home to Ballinamore where she would visit us for the weekend and her mother would then have to ring her and she would have to be at the phone at the right time. It's, it seems incredible now how we always managed to do this before the gift of mobile phones. And she, Ruth would come home to Ballinamore for the week. But no matter how many were in their house, and often there was a huge crowd, Dad would not get flustered. And he would see Ruth and he would say, you're welcome. And that's one of her memories, and that was certainly our memory of Dad as well, uh, a welcome. Now, sometimes the welcome could be a bit impatient. You could be, you could be in Eden Tenney, or in, um, and this is when mobile phones had arrived, or you could be in Ardrum, and you would get a call on the phone, and you had to pull in and stop the car, and you would know who it was ringing. It said, where are you? Why aren't you here yet? The welcome was anticipated, if you like. A love and a welcome. And our prayer now is that Jesus and Mary and Joseph will welcome Joseph into heaven and bring him to glory and to happiness and peace. Come to me, all who labour and are overburdened, and I will give you rest, and you will find rest for your souls.
May his soul rest in peace. I invite you to stand now for our prayers of the faithful, where we'll pray for Dad, for Mam, and for all our dead, and for all of us. As we present Grandad's soul to your heavenly care, we give thanks for the gift of his life. In faith and trust, we ask you to grant Grandad's peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious, hear us. We pray for Grandad, who is in baptism, who was given the promise of eternal life through the kindness of God. May God welcome him into the company of saints in heaven. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious, hear us. We pray in thanksgiving for all the blessings that came to so many people through the life of Grandad. As Grandad's life has been poured out, may God pour his blessings upon him. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. We pray for Nanny Bernie, Grandad's beloved wife, for Batty, his revered father, for Ellen, his mother, for Carmel, his big sister, and for all our loved ones who have gone before us, marked with the sign of faith. Grant them an everlasting home with your son. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. We pray for ourselves, the family and friends of Grandad. We pray especially for all Grandad's friends in Kenabo, a place he held dear to his heart. In these difficult days, may the Lord be our strength and our consolation. May we find comfort in our common friendship and faith. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. We pray for all the staff of Balmore Primary Care Centre who cared for Grandad with so much love and care as he faced old age and illness, helping him die with dignity and faith. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear the prayers that we offer in our lives. They are also the silent prayers we offer from our hearts, from our minds, in quiet confidence that you will hear and grant us what is good for us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please seat be seated. <clears throat> Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth is given and human hands have made, who will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Receive, O oh Lord, the sacrifice we offer you for our parents. Grant them everlasting joy in the land of the living and unite us with them in the happiness of the saints through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life has changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven, 
And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominations, and with all the hosts and power of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. <coughs> You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said a blessing, and broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to a second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognize in the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit and become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance which are elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Patrick, St. Bridget, and with all the saints whom this constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Martin, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant, Joseph, Patrick, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who is united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in flesh those who have died, and transform our lowly bodies after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away every tear from your eye, from our eye. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you, and for all ages, and praise you without end. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. Please stand. And we invite all of you, especially those who are at home, to join us out loud in praying the Our Father together.
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. The power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all of us. Normally we offer each other a sign of peace, but because of the pandemic we can't do that. But we can pray for each other. We can quietly and gently pray for peace in all our souls. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you shall enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
would now, we'll now invite uh, Emer to read a reflection on dad and on fatherhood. For a father, the longer we live, the more of your presence we find laid down, weave upon weave, within our lives. The quiet constancy of your gentleness drew no attention to itself, yet filled our home with a climate of kindness where each mind felt free to seek its own direction. As the fields of distance opened inside childhood, your presence was a sheltering tree where our fledging hearts could rest. Their earth seemed to trust your hands as they tilled the soil, put in the seed, gathered together the lonely stones. Something in you loved to inquire in the neighborhood of air, searching its transparent rooms for the fallen glances of God. The warmth and wonder of your prayer opened our eyes to glimpse the subtle ones are internally there. Whenever silently in off moments, the beauty of the whole thing overcame you. You would gaze quietly out upon us, the look from your eyes like a kiss alighting on skin. There are many things we could have said, but words never wanted to name them, and perhaps a world that is quietly sensed across the air in another's heart becomes the inner companion to one's own unknown. Let us pray. May participation in this heavenly sacraments obtain perpetual life and rest for our parents, we pray, O Lord, and bring us along with them to the fullness of your everlasting glory, through Christ our Lord. Before the final commendation and farewell, I just want to invite my brother John to speak a little of Dad and to extend a thank you to so many of you not just those few of you here in the church, but all of you out there who normally could join us and haven't been able to do so. Um, this is a bit like the John show. Um, here I am again. Wait till we see in the graveyard I'll do my big finish. Um, good afternoon to everyone and to all of you, our loved ones watching online, which has become the new norm. Um, I'm standing in front of a very small congregation and seems quite unjust for a man who held Ballinamore firmly in his grip and who gave so much to the town. It seems such a stark contrast to Ma Mammy's funeral, which filled the church. Indeed, we were talking the other day and we could hear Mammy saying, um, my funeral was much bigger. I had several priests, Josione had one. So, there's a good few thank yous that we would like to extend. Firstly, on behalf of the family, I'd like to thank Father Mon and Ballinamore Parish, Katie Degnan, who sang so beautifully, Liam and Claire McGurl. And the McGurls are lifelong friends of ours, and it is so special to have Liam involved. And he carries out his role with such dignity, kindness, and subtlety. Um, a big ta thank you to our talented cousin Rosary, Rory, not Rosary, who is our camera, although he's very good at saying the Rosary, um, who is our cameraman today. Uh, thank you to all Mam and Dad's home helps. A special thank you to Kathleen McGorty, to Laura Lodge Nursing Home in Longford, to Ballinamore Primary Care Centre, um, which has managed to create a community within a community. Walking into their welcoming doors was like walking into your own home. A place filled with love, kindness, good humour and care. Thank you to the community of Balnamore and all our neighbours and friends far and wide. A Jared alluded to this earlier on. He actually stole some of my material. Um, at times like this, we usually shake hands, we hug, we tell stories and we pray together. 
And although we haven't been able to carry out these rituals physically, the five of us have felt your handshakes. We have felt your warm embraces. We have heard your stories. And we have heard your whispering prayers through your phone calls, text messages, messages on RIP and the food you dropped over. To our wider family, aunts, uncles, cousins, the Cryans, the Heslans, the O'Briens and McManamans, for being such a wonderful support. To our brother-in-laws, Babby, John and Alan, who showed so much love to Dad and brought out the best in him. Dad and the three boys played a four ball um, once upon a time and Dad, having scored a hole in the one, was greeted in Ryan's pub to a rousing chorus of who put the ball in the seventh hole, Josie, Josie, led by his son-in-law, John Ryan, leading the unconventional choir. Um, to Columba, Dad's older brother. The other night, Columba was telling us stories about how Dad would stand up and fight Columbus, stand up for him and fight Columbus Corner if anyone unfairly tackled him or hit him a sky to the match. And in Dad's latter years, the tables were turned and Columba, with Kay, fought Dad's corner and always looked out for him. Thank you, Columba. Jared would like to thank um, the, the Bishop and, and the Diocese of Elphin and the principal and staff of Summerhill College where he teaches for all their understanding and support down through the years. As siblings, we are really close. And as the care for mum and dad increased, so did our bond. And despite the fact that we actually saw less of each other because we took it in turns to come down, we actually became closer. In the past few weeks, we have laughed, we have laughed and we have broken bread together. It is no accident that this cohesion and harmony exists. We are two amazing role models. They have taught us the importance of love, kindness and laughter. And so I'd like to thank, I suppose, my siblings individually. Firstly, Jared, for doing such an amazing job today and in the last few days. It is not an easy task to officiate at your parents' funerals, but you do it with such decorum, poise, reverence, and perfection. We are so lucky to have you as a brother, someone who is always so calm, and now I have to calm down, <laughs> reassuring and kind. Anyone knew, who knew Dad well knew he could be a tad challenging. And Jared often fared out the worst of this because of his gentle nature. He never fought back or argued. In other words, he did what he was told, unlike Ruth, Carmel and I, who never did what we were told. Jared, you are incredible and we just love you. Ruth was the son that Daddy never had. Uh, she loved golf and all sports. And it is, it is really difficult watching your parents suffer but the pain was always eased by the presence of Ruth, with her positivity and her great sense of fun. However, Ruth has a serious side. She loves the website RIP.ie. She has the app and she gets notifications. And you'd ring Ruth up and you'd be on the phone and she said, three people died in Leitrim yesterday. So look, if you're having trouble navigating the RIP.ie website, contact Ruth. Daddy just loved baby Carmel. She was the apple of his eye. And like Ruth, Carmel kept us all going with her quick wit, wit and her great humour. She also fed and watered us all down through the years and her and Alan's home always had the door open and the kettle on the hob. The middle child is often identified as the difficult one. Not our middle child, Elaine. A huge thank you to you, Elaine for all you did for mum and dad's care. You were you are our consultant, our therapist, and our guide. I mentioned earlier that, earlier that our cohesiveness was a lot to do with mum and dad, but I also believed that you had a major hand in this. In the background, as always, 
you quietly and subtly guided us all on the right path and showed us the way. You were the light in times of darkness, the plaster when we fell, and the glue that gelled us together. And me, I was just being fabulous. Josie crying, what a man. Seeing your dad as someone who isn't really your dad, you forget how he was. And sometimes it takes a death for all the lovely memories to come flooding back. And Jared alluded to already about Dad's role as Santa, and I'd forgotten all that. And seeing all the messages from people about how it was their Christmas fills us with pride. Carmel told us that one day she, at Christmas she complained to Elaine that Mammy was kissing Santa. And Elaine replied that Dad won't mind because it is Santa. We used to often wait up on a Saturday night for Dad to come back from the pub and have some chips, and he always had some for us. It was a brilliant treat to go up to D Dublin with Dad when he was on business, and we'd go to Wynn's Hotel for lunch. We were really fancy. And it was just brilliant. He loved theatre and was hugely involved in the Wren Boys, the Spring Capers, and the drama festivals. We were recently told of a story where, on the way to the stall to perform with the Wren Boys, Dad had arranged a meal in a hotel en route. Now, it was a Friday, and beef was on the menu, and at that time, um, no one in Catholic Ireland ate meat, ate meat on a Friday. It was fish that was eaten. So Joseph relayed his predicament to Tommy Moran. So before the meal, Tommy Moran announced, don't worry about the beef, we got special dispensation from Canon McManus. Dad passed on his love for theatre to me. I remember him raving about Brian Freed's translations, which I went to see here in Ballinamore at the All-Ireland Drama Festival, and incidentally starred our own Fergal McGurl. I just didn't get it. So about 15 years ago, I went again, and I got it. And I remember coming home so excited. Dad, I saw it. It was just brilliant. And you know, it's, the theme of it centres around the theme of language and communication, which was really ironic, because in the last few, day, few years, Dad's capacity to speak was fractured, and indeed a lot was lost in translations. He was trying to talk to us in the last few weeks, and we just couldn't understand what he was saying. A few times I held his hand, and as I sang to him, he squeezed my hand. He might have been telling me to stop. <laughs> um, Dad dressed up as, um, as women, I remember, in Three Lovely Lassies in the Spring Capers, I may not have got any of his sporting traits, but I can dress up too. I only came out to Dad about five years ago, and he said, I love you no matter what. And I got into my car, and I cried all the way back to Dublin. I cried that I hadn't been honest. I cried that I hadn't told my mum. And I cried tears of regret that I should have known that this man, my father, would have accepted me no matter what. Well, to be honest now, I never thought for a minute it was a shock to him. <laughs> After all, I played with dolls, dressed up in mammy's clothes, and I loved musicals. Dad was also so involved in the golf club in Ballinamore, and he just lived for a round of golf and was a key instigator in its involvement and indeed its development. He was so proud of Cannibal and all things Ballinamore. Someone said on RIP that he took no nonsense and he took no prisoners. And that was true when he was out in the golf club or at a festival meeting or on the bar stool in the Schlievenieren Hotel. But around our table in Kilty Mooden, he showed us love, pride, interest in what we were doing. And no matter what decisions we made, he accepted them held our hands and praised us. None of us live in Ballinamore now, and for us, that connection that is gone. A piece of us is broken. But to you, Dad, the jigsaw that you and Mum pieced together with love, care and attention will not be lost or broken as five strong pieces remain firmly intact, firmly as one and firmly as a family of five 
with love, laughter, and full of memories. Thank you, Dad. There is sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see Dad again and enjoy his friendship. Although this congregation will disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console us one another in the faith of Jesus Christ. Saints of God, come to his aid. Hasten to meet him, angels of the Lord, and receive a soul and present him to God the Most High. May Christ, who called you, take you to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Eternal press, rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our Father Joseph, in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Joseph in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of your fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with the assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and we are with you and with our brother forever. Amen. So, before we leave, please, uh, Josie, to bring him to his place of rest in Agnishilan Cemetery on behalf of Father Johnny and myself and the whole community here, the parish community, I want to express our sympathy to Josie's family, to you, Father George, to Ruth, Elaine, John and Carmel, and to Columbia here, his brother, and to all extended family, grandchildren, and all who will miss this man dearly. Um, you know, I just got to know Josie at the time of Bernie's death and then afterwards in uh, the home here in Balnamore. But unfortunately for the last year through COVID, um, our visits to the home have been greatly restricted. So we were not able to uh, make much contact with him then, since then. But I'm sure he is very, very proud of the beautiful 
Mass you celebrated, Father George. Um, it's never easy for some to celebrate a parent's funeral mass. You did a, a most beautiful, inspiring, and moving homily. So well done on that. Beautiful, I must say. And also, of course, to John for your tears and laughter. Uh, it was um, a beautiful tribute to Dad and indeed to your uh, siblings as well, too, for the way that you all combined as a family to look after him so well and so supportive in the last number of years. Um, I've heard so many exciting stories about uh, Santa's visit to um, crimes here over the years, and it's, it's a, obviously a, a wonderful memory for so many children of that era, and uh, makes me a little bit envious at times to think, well, perhaps it would be nice if I was born in Balnamore and had the opportunity of coming to crimes and experiencing Santa Claus visit and all that went with it then. So uh, we entrust our Josie, to God's rest, we ask the Lord to comfort all of you on your sadness. And no doubt there'll be sad days ahead, difficult days, but I pray that the cherished memories you have of Dad will be a source of hope and comfort to you as you move throughout this coming year and thereafter. just like to once again thank Father Mon for his very kind words and his, his support uh, for Dad and for all of us and for myself at this time. Um, the lines in the ritual at this point are these. In peace, let us take our brother to his place of rest. But Dad, when he was giving speeches, whether it was introducing plays at the drama festival or whether it was other f functions when he was finished and somebody, uh, something else would happen, he would always say, without further ado. And perhaps I could echo that now. Without f further ado, we take Daddy to be buried with Mom, with Branda, and with his mother, Ellen.